Hello, I'm Keith Pierce. Welcome to Save Our Towns, a series designed to guide and inspire those who are working hard in Appalachia to build strong communities. This is a special bonus episode to provide coverage of and lessons from the lead poisoning tragedy in Flint, Michigan, and how that city's experience might pertain to you. We'll talk about the Dillon Rule, which could affect your local control of your town. First, our executive producer, Andrea Brunet, travels to Flint to offer this brief look and how a Virginia Tech professor and his students exposed lead levels in drinking water, despite attempts to belittle their work. When Leanne Walters of Flint brought her daughter and twin boys to Virginia Tech, people could see what the family had been dealing with. One of the four-year-old twins was hard hit by lead poisoning in the drinking water. He is no longer as big or healthy as his brother. Speaking after the public forum on campus, Walter said the hardest part of the water crisis was not being heard, knowing that my child had been poisoned and that it was happening to other kids in the city and nobody cared. As the world now knows, a team of Virginia Tech students and their professors cared. They packed up water testing kits and sent them to Flint residents and they even created an instruction video. Turn the tap off and place the caps onto all three of our bottles. Despite the team's results and the people's continuing protests, government officials continued to assure Flint residents that their water was safe. They worked so hard to discredit us, even though now we know they did know that there was a problem. Early on, the GM plant knew water from the Flint River was corrosive because it was damaging their engine parts. The Virginia Tech team even taught an elementary school class how to test for lead, and the children replicated the scientists' results. These fourth graders could see the difference and they could change the water out and see what um, lead was precipitating. Professor Mark Edwards and the student team kept plugging away. They made repeated trips to Flint. They spoke up about the medical effects on children. They supported residents at public meetings and gave voice to residents who were ignored. Since the science was straightforward, many people now assert this slow response to solve this crisis has much to do with the socioeconomic state of the city rather than the lack of science. Now the FBI is investigating along with Congress and the Environmental Protection Agency's Criminal Investigation Division. A switch in the drinking water supply was made from Detroit to the Flint River to save money. But why weren't anti-corrosion agents added to the water after the switch was made? We're here in the home of Flint resident Patty Warner, who keeps an assortment of bottled and filtered water for herself and her dogs. Come on, girls. Come on, girl. Yay. Come on. Leanne Walters ended up testifying before Congress. When the students tested her water, the very first sample showed 133 times more lead than the allowable limit. At times, her water was a thousand times the limit. Almost immediately, from testing in the two most affected zip codes, the evidence was incontrovertible. We analyzed 12 times more samples in eight weeks than the city did in six months. We worked together to prove that this was a citywide problem, not just a problem within my own home. Not just Flint residents, but also these students have had their faith shaken in government, starting with the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality and extending all the way to Washington, D.C. Just that they were hiding that from the people and just letting the people drink that water is, is pretty angering. And they think they can get away with anything. This mostly poor town was ignored and citizens who made their voices heard were shamed, humiliated, and even arrested. I started working directly with the residents. We formed this collaboration. We worked with the medical community. We brought them in. And it really took all of those people to reach a critical mass of moral courage to pull off this miracle. Convincing and passionate points of view from Michigan mother Leanne Walters and Professor Mark Edwards. Later, both of them have a few words for you on how best to react to any external threat. Moving on, we devote the rest of this bonus episode to practical tips and expert opinion based on the issues that resulted in the travesty of health and justice in Flint, Michigan. How might these issues affect you in Appalachia? As in Flint, our small towns must grapple with aging infrastructure. Next, we offer an expert tip from the vantage point of a planning district commission. These are entities throughout Virginia that might find ways to help replace your aging water and sewer infrastructure. We have uh, supported several regional studies, uh, both in water and wastewater uh, development, that provide uh, 
and we obtain the funding for those studies and then engineering firms work with the communities and with us to uh, complete these assessments, set a path forward uh, for their needs and then we work with them at their request to uh, seek public funding without which they could not possibly do these projects. Uh, many of them are multi-million dollar projects. You can read a transcript of James Baldwin's complete interview on the Save Our Towns website, including more information about planning districts. Next, we turn to a sobering topic given what happened in Flint. Virginia is one of a handful of so-called Dillon Rule states. The Dillon Rule cuts back on local authority, reserving powers to the state. Could the Dillon Rule curb your right to govern? Each year, journalist Dave Ress looks for new Dillon Rule predicaments. Here's Ress to tell you more. The Dillon Rule, as interpreted in Virginia, which is, more, which is stricter than many other states, says that if you don't have specific authority as a local government to do something, then you can't do it. And in Virginia, that means that you then have to go to the, the State General Assembly and ask for special legislation to do it. In Fairfax County, they wanted, um, they wanted to have their animal control officers be part of the police department, as is the case in a lot of Virginia municipalities. In order to make that happen, the Fairfax Board of Supervisors were unable to simply say, oh, we're going to call animal control part of the police department. They had to come up to Richmond and say, can we please have animal control be part of the police department? Similar, um, another little example of that is the town of South Hill, um, down near uh, the North Carolina line wanted to call, have its town treasurer be its finance director. They wanted to basically call him or her that. That also requires legislation. You can read a transcript of Ressa's complete interview on the Save Our Towns website, including more insights for town leaders about how the Dillon Rule is applied in the Commonwealth. Speaking at the congressional hearing on lead in drinking water, Representative Dan Kildee, who represents Flint, testified that during the time when the water became unsafe and residents were being misled, Emergency managers, not local leaders, wielded absolute control. In a special Save Our Towns interview in Flint, he says more about the impact on democracy. Under state law, the state itself took over the city of Flint, suspended democracy, and made a whole series of decisions that would never have been made by people who were directly accountable to their neighbors. I mean, the idea of using the Flint River as our primary water source saving a few dollars by not treating the water. Nobody in local government that has to go to the grocery store and explain their decisions to their neighbors would ever make that kind of choice. Democracy is not just about the decisions that are made, but the quality of those decisions being affected by the fact that we actually are among the people, we are from the people affected by those choices. In Flint, on the town council, Eric Mays helped and supported residents in their battles over drinking water from day one, according to Leanne Walters. In a special Save Our Towns interview, he talks more about the experience which elected leaders saw their powers taken away. I was disappointed when the emergency manager kind of made a mockery of our vote, didn't take it seriously, didn't dialogue with us, and just put out a press soundbite to try to make that vote look like it was not a serious vote and we didn't know what we were talking about. And even though we know elected officials, their intelligence, their due diligence varies, it's just what we believe in is the best system of democracy. Throughout the life of Save Our Towns, we've introduced you to two experts in each episode from the Virginia Tech faculty and from the Virginia Cooperative Extension. This time, we bring back two whose work pertains to drinking water. Leanne Kremitis works on access to safe drinking water and appropriate wastewater treatment in Appalachia. She manages projects, sometimes involving students, that help isolated communities which are often relying on private water systems. These are more susceptible to contaminants such as E. coli and lead if homeowners lack the resources to manage treatment. She hopes to end the practice of discharging untreated household waste directly into streams. Kevin Sperlin works with the Virginia Household Water Quality Program, serving rural Grayson County residents who rely on private water supply systems. This program provides confidential water testing and holds county-based drinking water clinics to educate users. 
Sperlin helps residents identify and correct private water system challenges such as excess fluoride, total dissolved solids, hardness, and acidity related to geology. For more information, go to the Save Our Towns website. You'll find Cremitas under the VT Projects tab and Sperlin under the Extension tab. This concludes our report from Flint and its lessons for you along with some suggestions about how to keep your local governance intact and pay for improvements to your aging water and sewer systems. We'll end with those words of encouragement and advice we promised you. First, you'll hear Dr. Guru Ghosh from Virginia Tech, followed by Leanne Walters, closing with Dr. Edwards. Thanks for watching. It takes moral courage, it takes moral leadership to be able to stand up to the establishment, whether it be political, whether it be social, whether it be academic. Do your research. Do your research. Look for somebody in that field. Reach out to them. So, you know, determination is all powerful in this world. Um, so that's the lesson I've learned. But you need, you need help. You need allies. You got to reach out to people and form alliance. But you, you just never give up. Ever, never, ever give up.